GTA, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, PUBG, and Fortnite. These were some of the games that I loved to play day in and day out. Never really had many friends in the real world, but I made a bunch of friends and I never met them in person. It was an amazing experience. All these online games that we are playing nowadays, they've got a real dark side to it, and if unchecked, can really wreck your life. On the dark, this is how Hey there guys and gals, how you doing? Welcome to Music Class, the place where future pop stars come to get inspired. If you're new to this channel, subscribe and hit the bell and share this video with all your friends and family who love to play games. Now, if you haven't been living under a rock all these years, I think you would know games are kind of a big deal. Everyone and their freaking grandma is playing these. No, I kid you not. Just the other day, my 70 year old neighbor was fighting over the smartphone trying to play Candy Crush. Like you know, games are fun, they're just amazing. And the best thing about games now is that you can be sitting in front of the computer at 11.45 p.m. in Japan, sitting in a dark room, playing with someone from Spain who knows nothing about your country or your culture or doesn't even speak your language. Congratulations! Chances are 9 out of 10 of you watching this video right now have played a game on PC or console or your mobile device in the last week or so. And at least 4 out of 9 of you have an addiction and trust me, it can go from bad to really nasty before you even know it. You must be waiting for your gaming gods like Rockstar, Ubisoft and Activision etc to drop their next big game so you could sink into another one of their magical worlds that have been created just for you. But let me tell you this, all this comes at a price. These games are no less than your cigarettes and cocaine and other addictive substances. Gabe Newell just wants your soul and the Steam library is the new drug dealer and they're doing all of this absolutely legally. But let me tell you this, the average casual gamer is playing 2-3 to three hours a day and if you're really into it like I was, you're playing every waking hour. I don't feel so good. You're alright. I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. All these people who come back from work every day are just sitting right in front of the computer screens or their TV and they have little to no time for their family members. There is currently 2.3 billion gamers worldwide and out of that 50% of them are paying real world money to buy in-game stuff like buying a fancy hat for your character. As bizarre as it sounds, it's true. If you're not a gamer, if you're a gamer you know what I'm talking about. The gaming industry is a 138 billion dollar industry and it dwarfs the movie industry by almost a hundred billion dollars. Now you can imagine how big this industry is. Video game addiction, game addiction, however you would want to call it, is one of the biggest problems in the making in our society and I used to be a part of it and this is my story. Video game addiction is worse than crack cocaine. Trust me, I'm not exaggerating. It's something that's gonna keep you hooked and you won't be able to do anything else in your life. Now I'm speaking from personal experience, I always wanted to buy a good gaming PC all my life. But since I couldn't afford it in school, I could never buy one until I started teaching online. I started a company, music class, where I taught vocals and guitar to people all around the world. And very soon I was able to buy my own beast of a gaming PC in 2016. It was the single most worst decision of my life. My business went from being a good startup to a failed venture and ended up costing a lot of bad rep from students' parents. The worst thing of all this? I stopped practicing my favorite vocals and guitar. The thing that I wanted to do so badly that I had once dropped out of college for. And then it hit me. Depression. 
I went to a point of no return. I went to a point of not giving a shit about anything. I overate, never exercised, and soon I became suicidal. I couldn't find the point of living anymore. Nobody understood me. My days went from waking up excited every day, teaching amazing people all around the world, singing and playing the guitar, to canceling lessons after lessons for just playing on the PC. I effed up big time. The last video I posted on YouTube was on October 30th, 2016. It's almost two years ago. I was building this channel up so that I could help people like you and me learn how to sing. But hey, it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. And gaming was that slippery slope that just dragged me down and brought me to my knees. It's like I was alive in the real world, but living in the open worlds of GTA and Assassin's Creed. Just think of this, when we were playing these games, thoughts that are designed by Rockstar and Ubisoft and other game companies are streaming into your head. We were worrying about bullshit details like which car goes the fastest and what paint jobs can you apply to your new DLC car or what is the damage level of your character's blade and sword. We were searching for easter eggs in the game and missing out on the real things that are happening in the real world. Even when we were eating, sleeping, pooping, we were living in these worlds created by these big developers who give you the momentary pleasure for sure, but in the long run they're doing a huge disservice to your life. I think just how cigarette packs come with warnings saying cigarette kill, games should have a similar warning label on all of them. These games give you a momentary high because it makes you think you're getting a lot of work done so it generates cortisol and it starts to make you anxious and then your main focus is to get rid of that anxiety so you fire up that PC or console to play again. And we feel stressed when we lose the internet connection for a bit or when we lose a match or a race to someone, fail a level or a mission and then we do this. I'm sure all you gamers can relate to this feeling of losing a match and then, you know, the rage that we experience. Yep. We've all been there. And I, for one, have gotten really, really close to that one. And what do you think about these people playing Pokemon Go? Does it look normal to you? To me, it doesn't. There is clearly something wrong. You don't need to be a scientist to figure that out. Video games are extremely taxing on your brain. It messes up your mental acuity, which is no wonder why we have no energy to do anything at all after we have played for a few hours. This is what I mostly spent doing for all of these two years. And boy oh boy, did I have to pay for it. It's like I had the keys to the kingdom. The stuff that most people only try and fail to get online. And that is building a business you love. I did it. But this addiction of mine killed me and I spent most of my time doing a lot of shit for no reason at all. Trust me, whatever game you're playing now, it can only give you a momentary high. That exhilarating feeling of winning a chicken dinner in PUBG or winning that race in GTA, that's it. And you're paying for that dearly in lost time, energy and the best thing you'll get out of gaming is depression. This needs to stop before it's too late, trust me, it's hurting your loved ones and you are getting a wrong idea, a distorted vision of life. I'm sober from playing games for a few months now and I've been playing the guitar again and I'm singing again. It was really really hard to quit and this is what I learned, you need to be able to catch yourself when you're playing. Like, when you're actively playing or whatever you're doing, you're grinding to do something, to get something, to get gold, to get money, to whatever it is. If you're interested in quitting, this is what you gotta do. When you're playing actively, you need to be able to catch yourself and, and, and ask yourself questions like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Will this really help me in my career, in my life? Am I trying to be the next Shroud or the next Ninja? <laughs> yeah, uh, or, or, or is this just a passion of mine or I'm just wasting time in it? 
look, I'm not talking about competitive players. If you're playing competitively, that's something else. I don't know much about it, but all I can say is, for me personally, and this video goes out to all those people who would want to do something else with their lives. This video is not for those people who are taking gaming as their primary source of living. This video is mainly focused for those people who want to achieve big things in their life, maybe build a business, maybe maybe do something, maybe go travel, maybe, maybe make a girlfriend, maybe do something that's outside of sitting inside a room and then just playing, you know? It's for those people. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying gaming is bad. This video is mainly focused for those people who want to do more with their lives than just playing games. I'm sure there's some few who wants to build a business, some of you who wants to learn a musical instrument, some of you who wants to learn to sing, some of you who wants to go travel, some of you who needs to have a girlfriend, some, something, something that's outside of gaming. And I know gaming is stopping so many of you from doing whatever you could have done, you could have been. And I would like to urge you to try and move towards that and face these, these demons and, and try and overcome them. Understand this, we are all human and we mess up, okay? Just because you messed up doesn't mean you can't get back up and try again. Get back up and try something different. Get back up and do whatever it is that would fulfill you from the inside. This video was made for those people out there who need that nudge to tell them that, yes, it's okay, you can quit gaming. Whatever game it is you're playing, maybe it's GTA, like I used to play, or PUBG, or Fortnite, that's a new thing now. All I can tell you is, it's only giving you some momentary highs, and it's really messing with your brain, and it's messing with your life, and it's not helping you in a real productive way. Again, before you go down in the comment section and then just bombard this channel of what the F am I talking about, I have no clue. This video was to help you choose happiness instead of addiction. This video was made so that you would understand the ramifications of gaming, of gaming with an addiction. In the description below, I'll add websites that are catered to helping people getting out of addiction. So check that out if you're interested. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you don't like it, you know what to do. And if I was able to help just one of you out there quit gaming or quit any addiction for that matter, then I would think this video is a success. And if you're the one, be sure to comment down and tell me your thoughts. And whatever you think about this video, please comment down below and let me know. And if you like music, if you like listening to songs, I'll add videos right here and right here uh, for you to watch um, our covers that we, that we made. And if you like to sing, I'll add some vocal tips videos here too. So you'll find the videos here and here and in the end screen. And for the 200 people who subscribe to this channel, I want to tell you that we are officially back and we're going to be posting every Wednesday from now on until we get on to a very regular video upload pattern. And we have a lot of stuff planned, so stay tuned. All right, guys and gals, just like the old times, stay awesome, bye bye, and take care. On the dark desert highway, cool winds in my hair, warm smell. Rising up to